until right before air. Uh, so there's there's going to be a twist, right? There was no twist. There's a twist. No. Scientists no. are also alarmed now. This was uh, I saw this this morning in my Apple News. Over 75% decline in flying insects mm -hmm. over the last 30 years. It, the cause is unknown. I've heard, I had heard about the bees, but bees. scientists yeah. are actually concerned over the catastrophic potential, the ripple effects for, uh, I mean, the disappearances of insects, not only like bees, but flies, butterflies, uh, and, and moths, and what it could have in our ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So many are preparing for the worst, which actually explains why no one's seen this guy in months. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fan of hybrid seeds. <laughs> hybrid seeds. Gosh. Fun fact, he ordered a lot of Prepare the Crowders. He ordered a oh, lot. Oh, very nice. He's prepare a supporter of the, the show. Com. Hey, by the way, Kermit the Frog was Kermit in an abusive relationship. Yeah, he People was. People who don't talk about it, like, it is one of those things that makes it totally acceptable and tells young men that you should stay yeah. in relationships where a fat pig, where Amy Schumer beats the hell out of you. <laughs> that's, that's healthy for you as a young I think man. They're both each other. He was stay always very silent. nice himself, though. No. He Kermit? was kind of a bitch. Kermit? He was kind of a He was bitch. a pushover between his prepping. Mm. He knows about the EMT I attacks. I know a different side of Kermit. <laughs> Lindsey Vaughn is now on That's a mission, terrible. I love this, to prove that women are just as strong as men. Oh, dear God. No, that's not the <laughs> joke yet. Look at the squat. Look at the squat there. Struggling with the photo op with 243. Um, if you read the fine print, however. <laughs> that's not 243, though. We added that up. Oh, really? It well, no, it's kilograms. That is kilograms. With kilograms, it's 243 pounds, I think. Ah. It's a 25, a 25, and, and then 220s, and the, the bar is 45 pounds. I think it's somewhere around 240. So Courtney check our math. Cr would crush yeah, her. Courtney right. would crush her. Yeah, exactly. And you beat Courtney in arm wrestling. So if you read the fine print, <laughs> however, and this is what I, on Fitness Pal, but it's sponsored by Under Armour, she says, I quote, women are just as strong and we can do whatever we put our minds to. It's not about being subject to a standard that men are the best. We can be just as good. It's not about limiting yourself. Standards don't apply. Oh, <laughs> the standards don't apply. Oh, dear God. Well, okay, then we get it. <laughs> <laughs> we can be just as strong, okay, and just as athletic. Yes, if you remove all strength, speed, and conditioning parameters. <laughs> <laughs> also, pull-ups. Can we? We can. If we, you, <laughs> if you just remove those and let us do the dead hang, we'll make you into our bitches. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, can we just? We're just gonna stand there, so good. I just. Uh, uh. How could she possibly take herself seriously? <laughs> Women can be dressed as strong, Gerald. That's the, fir the first part. I'm like, no. No, you can't. It's over. Damn it. The Warriors could have saved themselves <laughs> $30 million a year uh, by just going with Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, she'd have given LeBron to hell a run for her money. That is horrifying. <laughs> that doesn't, don't keep that on screen any lo longer than it needs That's to be. It's a possibility. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. We're good. It's on a related rip. note, a 220-pound male tranny, Hannah Mounty's application to the AFL women's football draft uh, was denied. Aww. So in European words, the 190-centimeter, 100-kilogram Mounty began transitioning from male to female in 2015 and was formerly a member of the Australian men's Handball team who failed to qualify for the Rio Olympics in 2016. Aww. In other news, still under review is Harvey Weinstein's application to Curves. <laughs> <laughs> also to uh, Home Depot's Home and Garden section. With <laughs> that, shit, that is not a good enough blur. It's gone. Gosh. It's gone. <laughs> and it's gone. We deserve to be demonetized. You're get letters. We deserve to get demonetized. <laughs> this is one. If bankrupt. YouTube said it's restricted, I'd say you're right. That's one for you, you too. Yeah. It's kind of like the Anne Frank costume. No. If Little Tony. I was vindicated. I was vindicated. I was vindicated on Twitter. This. You are liable. That's true. If you're a Mug Club member, this is this is your fault. They're ignoring me when I was right. What were you saying? I was vindicated. What about the Anne Frank? Yes. Thing? People didn't think there was anything wrong with no. it? No. Yeah? People thought I was right and you were wrong. Tell you what. Dang this it. Halloween, you go as <laughs> Wait, why? How did <laughs> Yes! How did Let's come into go, this? you and I, Halloween. No, shoot! Bleep this. Hit the center button. Bleep it because I don't want someone stealing my idea. Okay. <laughs> Just bleep the whole thing. Bleep the whole thing. Bleep, bleep the, the whole, whole thing. thing. Best Halloween costume idea ever. Boom. Thank you for being a tone deaf bastard, Gerald. <laughs> Me and millions so of other people. So much worse. <laughs> you have like eight no. followers. No, I was listening to other people's followers. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I just took all of them. It's the socialism. <laughs> all right, we have to get to guests. But uh, so before we, before we do that, this is what I really wanted to talk about. Slow news week. But I just, I cannot pass up an opportunity no. to contrast Ted Cruz and Bernie Sanders. Senator Ted Cruz, <laughs> Senator Sanders, they had a debate last night yeah. on the tax plan. And I want to know what you think as far as who won. I think Bernie's becoming really surly. But um, don't, don't take what the Young Turks tell you. Don't take what I tell you. I definitely encourage you to go watch the whole debate. Yep. It is 
a perfect example of conservatism and liberalism, leftism at play. Uh, let, let's go to some of the highlights. This is a man who owns a trucking company, I, I believe in the Midwest, I'm not sure. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, yeah. who uh, had a question for Bernie Sanders about uh, the, the exorbitant taxes that we pay. Senator Sanders, over my lifetime, all we've seen is more government and more expenses. Cutting taxes from top what made to him bottom, choose that design to top, however you view it. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, then we'll good. give some Listen relief to the, to the burdensome yeah. expenses all Americans face. Why would you not want a tax cut across the board for all Americans? Well, I do want a tax cut for the middle class and working families. But when the top one-tenth of one percent now owns ah, as much we'll come back to that. as the bottom 90 percent, <laughs> when you have a handful of people with incredible wealth and power, no, I'm afraid that I will not support tax breaks for billionaires. Okay, first off, does anyone else, this is one, something that bothers me. His campaign might as well have been called the 1% last quarter. If yeah. it hadn't already yep. been stolen by the Hells Angels because he's an unoriginal <laughs> old socialist bastard, <laughs> it was 1%, the top 1%. Yes. And now it's the top, because someone probably said, hey, uh, Senator Sanders, just so you know, it's like 300 something thousand dollars of the top 1%. What? <laughs> the top 10th of 1%? Now we're at the top tenth of one percent. He moved the goalpost, and nobody calls him on nobody. it. Nobody. That's a quick pivot. Soul. Nobody calls him on it. The Young Turks. Well, he slaughtered Ted Cruz. Well, you're absolutely right. So <laughs> here's what's funny. He uses some techniques that you'll see that we actually talked about on Monday, right away. So here's the follow-up from that truck driver. Do you really believe that the wealthiest family in America should get a tax break of up to fifty billion dollars? That the Koch oh, brothers should get a tax break of up Come to 30 right. billion. Again. Do you think that yes. makes sense? Think I did say all Americans. <laughs> oh, Do well, you think that the wealthy <laughs> should not get tax breaks? I did say all Americans. <laughs> okay, well, I happen not to believe that the Koch brothers need a tax break. <laughs> he ran into a middle class American who what didn't want a handout, consistency, yeah. it's what's for dinner, Bernie, and his mm. mind just <laughs> Right away, he did what we talked about on Monday. Obfuscated yeah. and what about the Koch brothers? Why? Yeah, yep. To try and capitalize, or the Waltons is what he did. Yeah. To capitalize on human greed. And he threw out incredibly fake numbers just to get you to go, oh, 56 billion. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of money. That's not going to get that much tax cut. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> They're not a small country. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> what were you going to say? I don't know. I just don't like Bernie. I just really don't like him. <laughs> well, you I watched this whole you thing. actually thought Ted Cruz came across as. I thought it was funny. I was watching this, I'm like, I would have loved to see this in the general election last year because I think yeah. we thought Ted came off slimy and Bernie yeah. came off as super altruistic. And I think we saw this and we're like, man, I think Ted Cruz came off really likable in this debate. And I think more than ever, this debate showed me like, man, Bernie is not a nice guy. You watch him just want people to suffer, the rich to suffer. He has a real loathing and, dis and hatred yeah. for wealthy people. He's the kind of guy who would save up his Uno, skip your turns, and pick four cards for like <laughs> yeah, the rich drop guy. Four, drop four, Coke, brother, drop four, drop four, Coke, 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 one tenth <laughs> <laughs> then he blows you the guy with the gun because he's still in vermont yeah, he's still in vermont exactly. most lenient gun laws in the country now here's what i thought was so telling is also the kind of people who tried to corner them so yeah. keep that in mind the kind of guy who cornered who did yeah. the gotcha to bernie sanders was multiple just times. asking multiple times yeah was just being consistent saying doesn't doesn't matter just about me or whether they're wealthier how, uh, how about lower taxes for all americans whoa, whoa, whoa. Can I capitalize on your greed with identity politics? No, I said all Americans. So that's the guy yeah. who was cornering Bernie, who caught him flat-footed. Uh, contrast that with the girl who was trying to corner Ted Cruz. I think it's telling. I come from a middle-class family, and I worked hard in high school to get into a competitive college. But even after academic scholarships, my parents and I are still struggling to afford my education, and that's without indirect costs. Mm -hmm. So it's hard then okay. for families like Thank mine to see the benefits yeah. of cutting corporate tax rates and reattempting trickle-down economics when that hasn't been a long-term solution for the middle class in the past. How would Other you justify cutting the corporate tax rate by 15% but only barely making a dent in the tax rate for middle class Americans? I, okay, this is, this is the, okay, the guy asking Bernie was, hey, how about doing the right thing? How about being fair, Bernie, and lowering taxes for everyone? That's his opponent. The opponent to Ted Cruz is, hey, 
Take from the truck driver. Can you take from him and pay for my college? Take from him, <laughs> give to me. Ted, why aren't you taking? What she's doing effectively is begging for Bernie Sanders to be the evil king in Robin Hood, to send out the tax collectors to take from the guy who runs a trucking company. She's, oh, how, how does reducing the corporate tax rates help? You, I just want to grab her by the, okay, that's what I want to, uh, just a visual aids here. All right, T truck driver and her right here, okay? I want to grab her by the hair and say, okay, do you know how this, you know how this benefits the middle class? All right, come over, see that? See that truck? It's owned by this guy. He's a small business owner. He's taxed at 39%. That's almost 40. That's almost half. This guy is taxed at 40%. You've never paid taxes. You have been going to college, getting an underwater basket weaving degree. You've contributed nothing. Let me, also, this guy employs 10 people. Guess what? If you reduce his taxes, he'll be able to pay them more. He's probably foregone a salary in order to make payroll for half a year, as most small business owners do. You non-contributing harlot. Okay, next. <laughs> I shouldn't have said Harlot because who knows how old she is. Um, <laughs> people just think that corporate, because that's what Bernie does. He cap people who are stupid, who don't know, go, well, corporate, corporations. No, he's the corporation. He's probably had a tough go of it. And the irony is the only reason her family has to pay for this skyrocketing cost is because the federal government got involved <laughs> in the first place. Yeah, I know. She doesn't but, even know that. But here, here he comes to save the day. <laughs> More government. It's me, old socialist Jew. Okay. <laughs> Next clip. This is just one of my favorites. Just ask, since this is a tax debate, <laughs> what is the difference between a socialist and a Democrat on taxes? Uh, well, I don't know because uh, yes, I don't know. <laughs> <have any Democrats. laughs> here's what I think. As a democratic socialist, right, right. similar to the people in Denmark and Sweden and but Norway not well. and Finland, people who have by and large a much higher standard of living than we have. Well, yeah, that's the obvious. Venezuela, which he praised for their bread lines. But hold on a second. Yeah. <laughs> 80% of Denmark, poverty now. <laughs> he claims Denmark, Sweden have a much higher standard of living. This is one of the biggest lies. It's determined entirely by subjective measurements. Okay, yeah. when you get objective, the United States has a significantly higher standard of living based on calculations by the OECD. And even Americans, they have more consuming ability according to the Danish finance ministry. Also, by the way, while we're talking about this, Mr. Socialist, they have far lower corporate tax rates. Hmm. Oh. It is amazing. Interesting. It's, it is one of those deals where um, it, the it's a comparison. So pe people prefer it. Mm -hmm. People yeah. people prefer uh, it, 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 their lifestyle in, 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 in Denmark. Okay, take a guy who's making 200000 a year, ask him about his Honda CR-V. What do you think? Yeah, it's an all right car. It gets me from point A to point B. Take someone who's making $50,000 a year and has a piece of crap beat up Saturn he got for free from his uncle. That car is like gold. It doesn't mean that it's better. If you ask someone who's poor, who has crappy health care, but they think it's free, that they think it's, they're going to say it's better. People are going to yeah. say, yeah, I think my lifestyle's better. But Ted Cruz handles it pretty, pretty uh, deftly. You know, we would just witnessed a very important moment in this debate, which is that Bernie admitted that he wants to raise everyone's taxes, not just the rich. The question uh. was to pay for this socialist state. You got to raise everyone's taxes. And Bernie said, yep, that's right. Your taxes are going up. He's so that twitchy, is a Bernie. rare moment yeah. of candor in Washington. You know, it's interesting but he just took when the I super asked serum. him the difference yeah. between a Only socialist never kicks in. and a Democrat on taxes. He couldn't tell me. Only on his lips. I, I can't tell you either because the Democratic Party today, the difference is Bernie admits his policies are socialist. Now, he lionized... Hold, hold on, I didn't interrupt you, Bernie. He lionized socialized medicine in That's Europe. That's the first time I've seen Bernie's upper teeth. Medicine, <laughs> there are waiting periods. There's Here rationing. The government says if you're an elderly person, you need a hip replacement. It says, well, you may not get a hip replacement. We were talking about Denmark. The average wait time in 2014 for cataract surgery you leave that was up there? 83 days. Come on back. 83 days. And Very specific. Bernie's prepping his counter argument. In Denmark, which he brought up for hip replacement, was 55 days, 59 days. 55 days, 59 days. Wow. There is a Hard reason numbers. why, Bernie, I didn't interrupt you. Just not, Bernie likes Bernie to glorify all, all, all night. But He's if old. you look at the greatest <laughs> engine of prosperity the world has ever seen, it's the American free enterprise system. There is a reason. Millions of people risk their lives to come here. This you know, is when he goes into campaign mode, which I don't yes, like. We but, have people yeah. who are suffering in this country, Watch. but it's worth noting that in the United States, per capita income in the United States is over five times greater than the world average, and it's 50% greater than Europe. 
Ding, ding. There okay, that's important. Again, because that's going to change the filter through which you see the world. Here's something, too. I know the Young Turks say, well, Bernie just slaughtered Ted Cruz, right, with facts, and Ted Cruz just lied. No, right there he just <laughs> gave numbers, 53, and I never just say that, you know, facts are bad to liberals. We try to substantiate it. Right there he gave a number. He gave, like, three different numbers, 53 yeah. days, 56 days, 59 days, I think. He talked about how our income is 50% higher than Europe. Yeah. Someone who is trying to obfuscate does not throw out those kinds yeah. of specificities as opposed to the generalities if they're scared of being called on it. What that is, that's Ted Cruz saying, all right, look, I'm giving you something really specific here because I want you to call me on it. I'm not just going to yell Koch brothers. Now, Bernie, <laughs> as he's doing this, he's saying, can we get, get, can we get that man from down there? And he's calling him yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. This is Bernie's rebuttal to those Hard numbers and data. Here you How go. How bad is the, and I don't know the answer. You tell me. Is the Danish health care well, system Shouldn't you know the answer? Terrible? It's a debate, dummy. Uh, no, I mean, I think the general characterization of, of sort of waiting lists across the board is vastly incorrect. And I'll give you the example of my mother, who is hospitalized with cancer. Uh, she was treated, you know, in a matter of one or two days. So? Good enough for me. <laughs> she got lucky. Good. Well, good enough for me. Yeah. One or two days. Back to you, you filthy whore. <laughs> Did we bring up that 16-year-old with the pearl necklace? I like that one. <laughs> Does he understand the concept of averages? <laughs> it's, it's, it, this is, again, let's say you're a far leftist watching this show, okay? I don't, don't take what I'm saying for it, but please just learn how to think when you're watching this. You watch one guy, even if you don't like privatized healthcare, even if you want socialized healthcare, in a to, to judge this debate, and I'll talk about this with Razor Fist, one guy gives you numbers, one guy gives you percentages, and the other guy says, well, I, I don't know the answer. Will you come up with an entirely anecdotal argument? <laughs> 1% Coke Brothers! No, top. One tenth of there we go. 1%, you son of a bitch! It doesn't roll off the tongue quite as easily. So that's his counter argument. That's the start of it. Yeah. Here's the coup de grace as far as Bernie is concerned. It's, it's his closer. Here are the facts. When okay. people are polled as to whether or not they like their health care system, we come down very low. Well. On the totem pole compared to uh, other countries. Uh, insensitive to Indians. Uh, <laughs> totem pole. How dare he? On the totem pole. It's Some would say <laughs> that if you ask people, it's more of a teepee with the wealthy <laughs> one tenth at the top and the fire on the, where there's the ninety percent. <laughs> I'm I drank a bucket of salt water. <laughs> Cultural brothers. appropriation. So he takes a Danish guy who comes from a place with a corporate tax rate, the same rate that Donald Trump wants for this country, by the way, takes a guy from, from Denmark, uses him anecdotally because his mom happened to get some good treatment. You know, if, 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 I, if I was misdiagnosed one time by a bad doctor, I get, well, you know what? One time I, um, turns out I just had hypothyroidism. They thought it was cancer. They gave me chemo for nine months. And, uh... Turns out my doctor was a criminal, had his license revoked, but I think Denmark probably has a better healthcare system. That's not <laughs> yeah. evidence. That's, that's, that's not a way to argue. No. He literally said, here are the facts. There's a poll! <laughs> <laughs> Again, people polled as to whether or not they like healthcare. When you look at the objective parameters, we have you look at the mortality rates. When you remove the infant mortality rate because we have a higher standard, it's better. If you have any kind of serious or life-threatening illness, you want to be in the United States. If you need to get an MRI, if you need to get treatment, you need to get hip replacement, you need to get some kind of uh, experimental surgery that's not covered. That's why people are flocking here to the United States for the healthcare. Bernie never refutes any of it. He asks some guy with a Billy Idol hairdo from a Scandinavian <laughs> nation to come out here. And, and, and the worst thing is to why I think he's such a dick. You know what it is? Think about what when he's saying 65%. That's a bully. Yeah. That's a bully. These people, there's more in my chain gang. <laughs> more like the baseball <laughs> furies in Midtown. <laughs> Literally, it is, it is a bully majority. Yeah. Not only is it yeah. a horrible form of argument, but it is yeah. saying, because I have more people, because the cool kids agree, because more people are like that little, like that girl who doesn't want to pay for potentially a gender studies degree than people who start their own trucking business. Because there are more people like this, look, let this intimidate you and let us take your stuff. What a nasty covetous old prick. We'll be back with Razor Fist after this. <laughs>
Bernard Sanders, a man of humble beginnings from Brooklyn, New York, a University of Chicago graduate, noted communist, and perennial unemployed couch surfer until his early 40s. You know him today as a champion for human rights, income equality, and as the esteemed Senator Sanders. Healthcare, human rights. But Senator Sanders holds a dark secret, for when he consumes his devious transformation potion, he turns into... Mr. Bernie. Unimpeded by logic, critical thinking, or basic impulse control, Mr. Bernie is an animal of pure instinct, privy to his most primal, carnal, and selfish urges. Uh, uh, human right. I'm the one percent! Fair share! Income equality! And this month, Mr. Bernie has but one mission. One fixation. You're crying out loud! It's 2017! Why are so many living so high on the hog? When others are left clearly without mud club! Try Mug Club completely free of charge for the entire month of October at louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. That's a full three month trial of Mug Club at louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. Because anything else would be a violation of human rights. And now for Barely Legal with Bill Richmond, sponsored by Mug Club. Hi, I'm Bill Richmond, the half-Asian lawyer for Louder with Crowder, here to answer questions about commonly confused legal terms. We have a question from one of our viewers. Bill, what's the difference between precedent with a T and precedence with a C-E? Glad to help. Precedent in the legal context is a prior judicial opinion that is the standard and controls in future similar cases. So, for example, you would say, oh, that Supreme Court opinion has precedential value in this new case. On the other hand, precedence is a word that people that are ignorant and douchebags like to use when they think they're trying to use the proper legal term. Precedence just means something that takes priority in rank or order or position. On behalf of Louder with Crowder, I'm half Asian attorney Bill Richmond. Cheers. This has been Barely Legal with Bill Richmond, sponsored by Mug Club. Yeah, you can see it in there. The lighting's a little hot, so it's a little bit tough. All right, next gift. Uh, next gift. He is a gift. He's a gift. I love this. You're still thinking about your pets. Last time, I'm still thinking, these are a gift. These are a these gift. These are a gift from the Lord We above. are so blessed. No, what actually happened, I'm missing half my sternum. And sometimes people are like, oh, look, Crowder has tits. Two I wonderful do. blessings. I do. I'm missing half of It goes in. And actually, I'll get chest I eat, when I, I, I swear to you, as a kid, I used to sit and put M&Ms in there. You're talking about this. Everyone's still thinking about your tits. All right, anyways. Razor Fist is here. This time he has video at Razor with a zero fist, and he's on the YouTube. You can go find his channel, Razor Fist. He's also going to be debating secular talk coming up soon. I have some questions about that. Mr. Fist, how are you, sir? Hello, everyone. You can you can see my, my magnificence this time. Uh, I am, for those who don't know, I'm Razor Fist. If you've never heard of me, that's because I want to stay just famous enough so I never have to blow Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's not how it works. He just masturbates into the fern next to you. Damn Learn it. the rules. See, <laughs> even I have There's limits. There's a work around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought a deep fried Adonis like that would have to meander outside the marriage for a little nookie, huh? Right. With those it's... Louis Anderson good looks? Yes, I was about as surprised as I was uh, for the fact that uh, Arnold bent over for Weeder. Like, like, this is an industry secret. This shocks me that the man who <laughs> judges other men's bodies in in thongs would have some kind of an attraction. Um, so listen, you have a debate coming up with secular talk, which is interesting because for a long time he would call me out in his videos, but then wouldn't debate when we invited him on. So this is good. How did this come about? 
I was asked to by the podcast in question. We don't know each other. In fact, we don't even know what we're going to debate about. I don't know this guy from Adam, so it's just going to be, I guess, a general debate. I guess we're just going to scream at each other and throw feces. I, I think that's the operative idea here. I don't know. That's the problem with online <laughs> debates. As someone who's probably familiar with it, like you, 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 you don't get to pick each individual topic, and you, you yeah. pick a general topic and then go. So you need to find a middle ground. Okay, this is the topic we'll be discussing, but then some people just want every detail beforehand to see your hand. He hasn't even given you a topic yet. <laughs> no, they just, <laughs> they just gave me this general idea. Um. Trump. Uh, okay. Right. <laughs> All right. Yes. I guess I'll be his attack dog. Whatever. Yeah. I'll defend the orange guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, you pretty much. Isn't it kind of sad that you already likely know uh, what the attacks are going to be, even if they just say one word, one word, five letters, you know. Right. I, I know. Exactly. I, that's. I, that's the thing, like, to me, Trump is so changeable sometimes, even I have difficulty discerning his true positions on certain issues. Right. Meanwhile, the Trump in the left's head is so specific. He's like a white Persian cat and a moon laser away from tying Austin Powers to a shark. You know what I mean? Like, right. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Uh, they're going to be laser beams atop that wall. It is remarkable because he is. We've talked about this. He's the most liberal Republican there's, certainly in the last century. Yeah, bar at the least. Probably. I would. I would definitely say more liberal than Theodore Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt, pretty pretty yeah. liberal Republican, um, but a super liberal. Certainly the most liberal of the spectrum that we had this go around. If you look at the primaries. Here's, here's right? the problem. He's very liberal, but he loves the praise so much. He knows where you can get that, so he says the right things to get the applause and retweets, which makes him seem far more right wing because. He, he kind of panders for the applause of that yeah. audience. Are you worried that'll be tough for you to have to kind of defend something that's a moving target versus them just defending Bernie, who's basically like, you know, spit in my mouth, Karl Marx! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my, I'm not terribly worried about it because the fact is, I, it's you can't defend against a fa you can't defend a phantom. They're just gonna they're gonna say whatever. Right. It's it's one of the reasons why I've said. Like, Trump needs to just steer into this Russia thing. You know, like, he needs to, because he needs to understand the media is just going to make up whatever the hell they want. You know what I right. mean? Like, just go ahead and steer into it. Serve Stroganov at the correspondence. <laughs> <you know? laughs> declare, declare Moose and Squirrel and right. enemies of the state. You know, right. give, give Chuck Schumer a Zangief pile driver. Go ahead. <laughs> By the way, very just difficult do to it. do. That's a 360 oh, yeah. ABAB combination. Zangief is for advanced players. Uh, that, you know, I don't think he, I think Jeff Sessions, I don't know if you watched that yesterday. Yesterday. This is a great example. It was on Twitter. Jeff Sessions trending. And it goes, look at Al Franken getting the best of Jeff Sessions. And what do I see? I see the clip of Al Franken going on for three minutes with 18 different rabbit trails before yeah. Jeff Sessions has a, a chance to answer. Yeah. And then I see the very next tweet in the trend is a conservative saying, look at Jeff Sessions swatting down Al Franken. And then something and was, about Dr. Pepper called it in. <laughs> something about Dr. Pecker, uh, Pe Pecker. Well, it was spilled on Ted Cruz's Pecker. <laughs> so I, it, it really is. It's at the point where it's just, it really does depend on your point. And that's where point of view matters. People are like, are you an ideologue? All of us are to some degree. So you have to recognize it and then be honest about your biases. I, I know that I, you're a truth seeker, uh, but people who try and act as though, like, I think we see this with secular talk. It's like, well, socialism is not a political issue. It's a moral issue. Well, gun control is a human decency issue. You don't care about people dying. And when they remove everything that they claim is not political, you're left with nothing or you're a horrible human being. That's kind of the playbook. Right. I think my favorite thing about gun control, and we're seeing this in the wake of the Las Vegas shooting, is they really don't want there to be no guns. They, in fact, want lots of guns in the hands of police officers, preferably while pointing them at us. Right. Yeah. Like what? What kind? Of, what kind of deep space nine wormhole have we hurtled through that the very same shrieking, emotionally unhinged idea files that perpetuated the uh, the hands up, don't shoot fallacy, and right. on the daily attempt to convince me, you, all of us, in vain, that policemen are in fact bipedal murder bots that subsist on a <laughs> diet of Dunkin' Donuts and minority tears. You know, they also happen to be alarmingly insistent that we hand our firearms over to the murder bots. I, it really is. Uh, we, remarkable. We did a we do this segment now just called Change My Mind, and I actually just set up at uh, school, mm -hmm. and I was promptly kicked out. Where I said, "I'm pro gun. Change my mind." And I was talking to someone who I didn't know. Well, this will, we haven't uploaded this yet. That's no, right. It'll probably go up Saturday. Uh, probably go up Saturday. Who um, apparently is a uh, disabled trans. I just thought it was one of the oracles from Minority Report. I had no <laughs> idea. And then she was. She did this exact argument. Well, I, I don't need a gun because I have an app on my phone that calls the police. And I said, "Okay, why would you call the police? She said, because they can protect me." I said, "Well." 
how do they protect you better than you would protect yourself? Well, they're trained with guns. And I said, do you believe we have a police brutality problem in this country? She said, uh, yes, she left. And then she had her hand up like she wanted to come back later because kids were lining up. Like, I want a second chance at the dunk tank. It really is. It doesn't mean you're not trying to win a debate, but you're trying to get these people to see if they have a rational argument. What's your approach in a debate? Is it to make someone look stupid or to try and illuminate the audience? Honestly, it's well, first off, you have to understand debate is really just a matter like you alluded to. I think it's really just a matter of confirmation bias. Like if, I've been involved in several debates and you invariably get all the people on the left say that guy won. All the people on the right say you won. And that's just kind of how it is. You know, if you unless you you just walk out there and rub your feces on the podium. Right. You're you're at least going to have some kind of argument that you won or you came ahead or whatever. Like in the first debate with, with Trump and Hillary. Like that one, he was so muted. It was like, if you were right of center, you said he won. If you were left of center, you said she won. It didn't right. really matter. To me, you just, you try to counter whatever arguments come your way. And if you get a chance at a zinger here and there, I mean, when have I ever turned down an opportunity at one of those? I mean, right. On, I mean, folks. that's the thing. You're like, well, it's ad hominem. You're like, hold on a second. Ad hominem, in addendum to a valid argument, is immensely entertaining. If it's in lieu of one, it means you're an idiot. Speaking of which, I know you didn't watch the Bernie versus Ted Cruz debate, but it is one of those things. I don't know what the Young Turks are going to be saying about this. Uh, well, you know, if you watch it, right, it just killed, uh, it killed Ted Cruz. It's fact. It's fact. Literally, there's a phrase there. We just talked about it. Bernie goes, you know, Ted Cruz brings up mortality rates, wait times, how the United States average uh -huh. income is 50% higher than Europe. And then Bernie Sanders goes, okay, here are the facts. 62% of Americans would like better health care. That, that passes for a fact? Like, <laughs> It, it's, it's remarkable to me. I know. I did it on Twitter. I did it with a Twitter poll. <laughs> By the way, the favorite pudding is tapioca. Too many vowels! Let's do it. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a constant trend. I feel like we're at a point now where every time someone who can actually articulate the right's point of view, uh, when they find a stage with someone who can actually articulate the left's point of view, it's, it's never even close. And I feel like that's why you have this sort of either alt-right or young conservatives, which you never had before. Because of the internet, you can see them side by side and say, oh, well, that one's rational. Yeah, precisely. And, you know, when you come back to their arguments, you invariably find they're flawed in some way or another. For, for example, like I'm not, for bring it back to gun control, like I'm not doing backflips with glee over the prospect of handing my defense weapons over to the federal government, but you know what else? I'm also not the one claiming the government is run by a literal fascist. Right, yes. yes. Like, if I see a bevy of black shirts doing their goose step down the uh, Tuscan thoroughfare around oh, 1932 or so, right. you know, burning, burning down half the block, color me reactionary, I'm probably not volunteering my personal right. uh, pea shooter for confiscation. But you go right ahead and virtue signal there, uh, Kenny. Like, <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, the next time some rainbow quaffed snake bite pierce sea cow uh, tells me they'd, and this is the one I love, tells you they they happily hand in their guns if they had any right right just go ahead and helpfully remind them that according to them they'll be handing it to a sun-kissed orange pussy grabbing russian conniving immigrant hating <laughs> anti-semitic bond villain right <laughs> if if they had any that's also something that's funny like well i don't have any guns they all say this and you're like well hold on 300 something million guns in, in the home it's kind of like when everyone came out 11 years later well harvey weinstein made a pass at me and I, but I didn't, it's like, really? None of you took him up on it, two Oscars? Can one of you just come out and say, I blew him? I yeah, have. I, and like, that's what I find most disturbing about the, the what are we calling that's the wine water scandal? I don't know what we're calling this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think the most disturbing thing about it is the idea that Renee, Renee Zellweger got laid. I think that's, that's what's keeping. <laughs> no, 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 no. I take umbrage with that. Pre, like Jerry Maguire, she was cute, and then she just made some horrible decisions when it came to medical care. I have no idea. Uh -huh. She is a perfect example who got surgery and, and and she got work done way too young. She was cute. You go back and watch Jerry Maguire, which is a fantastic romantic yeah. comedy, by the way. Very well written. She was cute, and then you go, oh, Nurse Betty. It changes. Although I, I'm, I do have a working theory. I think now we have an origin story for the perpetual Zellweger squinty face. Okay. Apparently, I think I think Harv dropped the robe and her face just froze that way. <laughs> she just she just walked into the room and he was right next to the potted plant saying, "You ready?" And she's, <laughs> uh,
to at, uh, least, to at least get a nomination for right, Cinderella yes. Man. Can I, can I at least say it's an honor to be nominated? Can I say those phrase? I just want to say those words. Uh, very much appreciate you coming. When is this debate, Razor, Mr. Fist? <laughs> the 25th of October, ladies and gentlemen. And where will it be? On your channel? On a general YouTube channel? Uh, it'll be on the Drunken Peasants podcast on 25th of October. Oh, dear oh, okay. God. There you go. So you'll be there. Uh, and that's uh, that's the one where you don't mention being pro pedophilia. That's about what I know. Uh, also, <laughs> I, 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 I hate to I hate to, to to fact check you at all. It's not really so much of a fact check. You're right about the fascist, but I I don't think you should throw out the baby with the bathwater. The goose step. Uh, very valid dance. It just was popular at the wrong time. It was like the Pilates for the Nazis, okay? It was the trend. It doesn't mean we have to, like, I still want a goose step every now and then. It does not mean that I support fascism. Uh, the, people can go watch the debate. They can find you, Ooh. Razor Fist, with a zero. Mr. Fist, thank you very much, and Godspeed with uh, the uh, Battle of Wits. Godspeed, everyone. Thank you for having me on. We'll be right back after this with, uh, oh, who is it? I don't know. Oh, we'll see. Crap. <laughs> What, what you think? You think that they're doing that? That's like a real set? You think that's one of them green screen business, yeah? I think it's on a spaceship. The f would you think that, Roy? It's got all that technology and whatnot, and fucking those dudes have, like, have that shit. Crowder's got a spaceship, man. I fucking know it. Right, not everyone who has more than a rotary phone is an intergalactic. What, what the f is wrong with you? I didn't want to say it. Call me your fucking pessimist. Pessimist. They got a fucking spaceship. I know it. I'm not being negative. I'm just being real. How the, how the, there's bottles over there ain't fucking bolted down. You don't think there's fucking bottles on spaceships? No, I don't. I think they, eat, they eat algae and fucking tang. Don't you read? Don't you? Or do you think reading? You think reading's for fucking Ridley Scott alien films? Get, get the fuck out of the house, Roy. Don't you dream? Obviously, this is a comedy show, but... Sorry, I have to come out and set this tone. In Iraq, female mechanic sparks gender revolution. It's being tentatively titled this project, The Women Can Make Suicide Bombs <laughs> Too Revolution. <laughs> Students at San Diego State University are now offered extra credit if they take a quiz to determine their level of white privilege. We should address the elephant in the room first. Comic Sans. Yes, On a college that quiz. Is the elephant. <laughs> <laughs> this is a clown the college? <laughs> We're gonna learn about white privilege. <laughs> do, do, do you find yourself often uh, with, with the munchies? Uh, if so, we have a snack that can be salty or sweet. A man finally came home after living in the woods for 10 years. Rumors have it that he was held there against his will by the Weinstein Bears. Oh. <laughs> I can show you my wang. It's amazing how smart you have to be to create something that stupid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's not gonna get trending. Glad to have our next guest because we've been in the dark about this. We've done a lot of gun videos, a lot of gun videos. but we didn't. Nothing that got removed in the wake of Vegas. That's not the case with a lot of Yet. the firearm-specific channels. Uh, we performed with them uh, in Dallas last year at uh -huh. the USCCA Expo. They've been on the show many times, and now they have a much nicer setup, so you can see them. They look. Uh, they also look trim and fit, like they're doing. Uh, they're doing a, a, a what is it called? The mutter tough mutter challenges. <laughs> Iraq veteran eight 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 eight. Eric and Chad, how are you, gentlemen? We are well, sir. How are you? Wonderful. How are you doing? Well, come on. Don't we? You're just saying it's it's going. To, you have to say it's terrible. They, YouTube removed all your bump stock videos. That's why you're here. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you know, that were good. Yeah. well, here's the, here's the thing. Only only one video specifically got pulled down, and basically it was the installation video from gosh, what was it? Four, four years ago. Four years ago. Yeah. And it didn't even have a lot of views. That's the weird thing about it. It was an old, you know, bump stock installation video. It's so from popular. Forever. Bump stocks. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it got pulled, and then they gave us an account strike. 
and uh you know i contacted you know a channel our size and your size likely you know we have like reps at youtube that are supposed to go to bat on certain problems and of course you know I, I contacted them about it like hey what's the deal like it's kind of a low blow to just arbitrarily say oh well uh by the way that you know this we has been okay our, for four years <laughs> we changed our but it's policy not now. overnight <laughs> right and, uh, Oh, we'll be seeing you. So yeah. I, I, I'm assuming they've given you back all the advertising dollars they've made off of these videos? <laughs> well, yeah. So basically what we did, we voluntarily pulled a lot of our older bump stock videos, which, to be honest with you, didn't really have a lot of views anyway. No. The only the only bump fire related video that we had that actually had a decent amount of views was the was one between Jerry, Jerry Mitchellick yep. and I. You know, Jerry is a really, yeah, he's really fast shooter. shooter. Yeah. Right. So the one with Jerry and I, where I'm shooting a, with a bump stock and he's shooting with his trigger finger and he's pretty much keeping up with the speed of the bump stock <laughs> right. yeah. with Easily. his trigger finger. By the way, for people who don't know, like Jerry Mikulik is like 95. Yeah. No, I'm exaggerating, but he's an older gentleman. He's an older gentleman who can outshoot he's anyone. Ridiculous, That's though. the beauty that the left doesn't understand. If you're talking about rape culture, you're talking about people being victims. Jerry Mikulik, a guy who was significant, he's, he's a guy who's at retirement age, put it that way. He can collect social security, could defend himself from anyone on planet Earth. It truly is the great equalizer. Yeah. Uh, go look up his stuff for people who haven't. Jerry Mikulik, it's fast and he has a great YouTube channel. But for people who don't know this, because we've talked with several other uh, firearm channels, it just happened kind of like the apocalypse. YouTube, after Vegas, decided no bump stock videos. Now, bump stocks, let's, let me ask you really quickly, just give me the short answer. Uh, are they illegal? No. Was no. this ever a violation of YouTube's policy before? Ah. No. Yeah, he's, he's just kissing his dog. And uh, <laughs> was it uh, <laughs> is this a random dog? Are you kidding? Who's that dog in my shed? I don't have a black left. And um, had they warned you at all before this strike regarding bump stock no. videos? Not at all. No. We literally no. just. We, it was That's funny scary. We, well, it was funny because we were at our annual YouTube uh, shoot with all, like most of the other big YouTubers out there and several companies, uh, you know, just basically a big networking event. And uh, we were going to dinner one night, and then all of a sudden, everybody started getting hit with these emails. All at once. Yeah, community guideline strikes. And they listed the videos that were pulled. And, you know, what's funny is, all right, we had a bump ski video pulled. You know, it's a, a variation of a bump fire stock, okay, made by Fostec. And there was another channel that had three videos pulled down that had nothing to do with bump fire stocks whatsoever. It just happened to have stock in the title of the video, and they pulled three videos and gave him an account strike. So, something as ambiguous as just a I mean, wooden stock. Yeah. <laughs> but why would you need a stock a unless you're gonna bump it? <laughs> That's a really stupid just, liberal pulling videos. It must be I the same feel, thing, same letter says, I match the it's letters. It's almost like, it's almost like somebody was on the back end of YouTube going, okay, all these terms right now are gonna be flagged. It's like stock, bump stock, bump ski, bump fire, Freedom. okay. <laughs> Enter, and then all of a sudden it just goes. Right. Goes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, there's a part of it where you go, okay, there's an algorithm. I, I was just talking about this. We profiled in the uh, the Washington Times. I remember I was talking about it yesterday, talking about this sort of these biases with Facebook and with YouTube. He said, is it, is it do you think it's algorithmic or it's it's human input? It's both. There's the algorithms and then humans review because there's the algorithm, but that doesn't remove videos that have stock in it necessarily. And then also confirm it. I did a video. We did a video word for word parody of Eminem's rap on BET, which yeah. was front page and center for three days. The it was disapproved yeah. to run as an ad. And I've been doing this to test content that they run, which is more profane on the same subject matter. They not only approve it on the other side, they feature it and then disapprove it. And, and there's someone there manually doing way it. Way more and language than the original, by the way. They, they, they oh yeah, the way words, more language. They didn't else. Yeah, we keep ours PG-13. <laughs> there's someone in San Francisco or in the New York offices saying, Iraq veteran 8888, what's a, why would anyone need a stock on a gun? It must be one of those fully semi-automatics and then your livelihood can go away. What, what are you guys doing? What should, pe I mean, how scary is it for you? Well, so, uh, you know, I, I had a chat with YouTube about it and they agreed. They were like, yeah, that was kind of uh, odd for that to just happen. <laughs> and you have no means, I, I have no no chance for any, any form of recourse and action to do anything about it. So normally, uh, whenever you have a, uh, a video flagged, you can go to the video in question that was flagged and there's a little spot that says like, uh, appeal. you know, appeal, appeal the strike. Mm -hmm. And you have an option to appeal it. And then I guess you can just type a little thing. Hey, uh, I don't think this is fair. You guys need to look at this, blah, blah, blah. And then they'll get back to you with an answer as to what they came up with. No option to appeal the strike at all, which you're normally given. And anytime I've ever had a strike on my channel, we've never had the ability to appeal it ever. Wow. So I contacted YouTube, talked to him about it, and they were understanding. I mean, the guy I talked to, he's like, yeah, I think that's unfair. I'm going to talk to my boss 
and see what we can do to maybe get the account strike removed because that is very unfair. He's like, look, the videos aren't there anymore. You didn't know. I mean, and that video was there for four years. Then, yeah, that's stupid. Why should you have an account strike? Like, he totally got it. Right. But getting something done is a whole other story. Yeah. You didn't know about that policy we would have six years from now. You didn't know. Yeah, you didn't You didn't right. know. Yeah, we have, a, 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 what, 700-something videos, and I think less than 30 are available unrestricted. Yeah. It's just, it, it's an, it, they don't even obey law. That's the issue, right? If you're following the law, YouTube can remove it. For example, we can have someone we interview. They give permission on camera. They don't even need to because it's a single-party consent state, right, which means you can film somebody, especially in pub public, but we still get consent. And then afterwards, they decide, well, we don't like the way we looked, and they complain to YouTube, and YouTube says, well, we don't really operate by the law. We're just going to take down your video. There, there needs to be, they, they're a business, they can do whatever they want, but they cannot set guidelines and then not follow them themselves when these guidelines are what people like you and I read and then say, okay, we agree to this, and then make our livelihood on the platform. It's the game yeah, switch see, that's a problem. Their guidelines are fluid, though. Yes, well, it's, yes, it's a, guideline fluid. <laughs> <laughs> the way they look at it, the way they look at it, it's a private platform. Yep. They can do whatever they want to with their platform. And if it means that they can show some people favoritism and then other people are the redheaded stepchildren that they're going to push into a corner and damn at every every turn, then they have every uh, ability get to out do that. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> the Argos isn't happy about No, he's not. He seems even, even genuinely perturbed. Even the dog perturbed. understands, for God's sake. Yeah, I know. And he's a black dog. How does YouTube feel about that? Sons of bitches. Um, so, he's part white. He's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it really okay. is remarkable. And they, um, they have the right to do what they want, but they don't have the right to lie about it. Especially yeah. when right. they lie about it and then take money for something that is not a violation of their guidelines and then turn around and harm the people who made them the money. That's some, that's some iffy territory. Well, um, here's the thing. Not only the people that made them the money, the other issue that I have is the people that help build the dang platform. Dude, I've been on YouTube since 2008. Yeah. We're not talking a small amount of time here. I mean, I've been at this crap for a long time. Right. I mean, people well, like me are partially responsible, in part, well, before uh, for why they're successful now. But sure. We help build them. A lot yeah, of people you know? don't realize this, but like, you know, his channel at the time, I mean, we've been friends for a long time, and, you know, the YouTube channel was just kind of like a hobby of ours. You know, we'd get together and shoot and do whatever and film it. It's like, hey, you want to film it? Yeah, whatever. I don't care. Yeah. But we were one of the first 50 channels that YouTube, when they were still privately owned and not owned by Google, you know, extended the hand out and said, hey, we're starting this partner program. Would you like to be a part of it? Yeah. We, we were, were the one, first, one of the first 50, 50 channels monetized channels on YouTube when period. they started that platform. My brother was you one know? of them, too. Um, we were there since 2006. And then uh, he had a video called Horror Friends, which was like a parody of and it was actually just he was, a, you know, he's a film major in college. So he uploaded his stuff and it had like four million plays, which back then was like crazy. Oh, you know, yeah. crazy. Um, it was that in the history of dance guy. And we're like, have you seen this? Like, yes, I have. Stop, grandma. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so that, that's another really important point. You built the platform. There would be no platform if not for people like you early on uh, are you still waiting on an answer for this with the, with the bump stock issue we haven't gotten any word back from them uh, i don't really think that they're i don't think that they would be dumb enough to uh do anything more than what they've done and i, I think they do understand like you know when hickok was removed for instance you know when he got pushed off of youtube and they actually like removed his account and everything yeah, and the entire channel deleted all his gone. videos like his his channel was bye yep. yeah they got a huge surge of hatred from a ton of people and they're like okay 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 all right we're putting it back we're putting it back you right. know and they dropped it like a hot potato so i don't think youtube would purposely like go out of their way to go all right well we're just getting rid of these guys all together i think there is a little bit of a mutual respect and a fine line there that has to be kind of drawn that we both kind of have to toe in the middle a little bit like when i contacted my youtube rep i said look man i met you in the middle i removed my other bump stock videos just out of you know out of a uh, brevity for the situation trying extend to extend an olive branch trying to you know? extend a little bit of an olive branch hey right. i'll voluntarily remove these videos meet me in the middle and pull the damn account strike right yeah i know is that too much to ask well, and I appreciate yeah. you guys are speaking out against it. You know, that's why we have we have you on the show, obviously, uh, millions of subscribers. And then we have Razor Fist just, just before you, who has 100-something thousand subscribers. Because, you know, I had my friend Lee Dorn, uh, who had a video removed as hate speech. And what it was, we talked about, Quint talked about this in the intro. It was a video just saying, hey, the Japanese weren't the victims in World War II. Here's how they treated the Chinese, the atrocities. Which, by the way, if you don't believe in evil, look at what some of the Bre Japanese regimes did to the Chinese. And uh, it was removed as hate speech because it offended some Japanese person. He was a small channel, had an uploaded anything in years, I went to YouTube 
and they actually fixed it, and they did remedy the, the, his channel. But here's the right. thing. I'm glad I was able to help, but I know that I can't help all the other small channels, and I don't want to be like Amy Schumer or like Sarah Silverman who do shock comedy and then close the door behind them and say hate speech. I want to make sure that I'm helping to pave the way for the other guys behind us, and I know you guys do that, and I appreciate you guys speaking out about this. Please do keep us updated. We have to get going. Where's the best place for people to find you and support you? Go to... Uh, Facebook, uh, it's uh, I write veteran eighty eight eighty eight official, and uh -huh. then I write veteran eighty eight eighty eight on YouTube. Yep. There you go. Next time, get I'm your the... get your plugs in the proper sequence. You have to look to him for a plug. What? Good <laughs> lord! <laughs> they have over a million subscribers. To we have Karen Strawn. Go can... writes what after this? I Shut up. <laughs>
Hello. Thank you again. I just, sorry, I just have to change my camera angle. Okay. Oh. Right away. Right away into the. <laughs> thank you. All right. You know, here's the problem is, uh, well, people who don't, people who don't know, that was a reference to the debate, the conversation with Naomi Wolf. Um, we always try to be very respectful of people who come on the show. I'm a much bigger fan of Socratic method than like highlight real debate, uh, sort of. But but it was um, it was disconcerting. Uh, I know you've debated Naomi Wolf, so I'd like you to give your perspective. You debated her on a panel, I remember, um, and she did this. It's funny. I actually have in my research notes. I watched what you debated with Naomi Wolf, and I wrote down. Right. She will say, uh, "What are you saying?" Google it, and she'll <laughs> she'll say in front of other people that she'll email you the source. I actually have this written down that she's highly likely to tell me she'll email me the source. Yes, right email well beforehand. And had counter. Literally, she did the exact same thing that she did with you. It was a playbook. Uh, when you watched it, did you see the similarities? Was anything new to you? Um, no. I, you know, she showed the whites of her eyes a lot. Uh, she was very, very concerned with what her hair looked like uh, when she was <laughs> when she was in the panel discussion with me uh she was sitting very forward in her chair okay. um and she was she was you know gesturing and she was speaking very effusively and not really saying a whole much she's sort of uh i guess they call it bloviating um sort of you, much ado you about don't guess nothing. you know that they call you know what bloviating is <laughs> Let's just let's well, just be honest. I you were do. perpetuating the female stereotype by being catty, but I love it. Continue. Okay, okay. Because I can't. I, okay, I suppose I am. I suppose I am because you know here she is. She's this woman who writes this book called The Beauty Myth, mm -hmm. right? And I completely disagree with uh, most of her fundamental presuppositions about society and about men and women. Sure. Um, and here I am with no makeup on and you know, my short hair and my tank top, and I'm just, yeah. I'm just here to give my opinion, and I, I don't, I don't look in a mirror constantly, and I'm, I'm not fiddling with my hair all the time, and I'm not holding my camera up. You are her worst nightmare. Know. But I also kind you of know. like that, though. I, I talk about that. Like, she, she's not the sort of blue-haired feminist. She's someone who is uh, ironically, and I do mean ironically, attractive and puts herself together for someone who talks about the beauty myth. She, she does that because it's objectively attractive to, to men. Of course. Of course she does. But at the same time, to complain about the fact that, like, it's, it's like she's like, women feel pressured to do this. Yeah. Um, and that's wrong, but it's something that I'm going to do every single day of my life, even though I believe it's wrong. Right. Right. Well, I want to get I want to get beyond the highlights in her hair because I could go on this for days. But I do want to ask you about what was really concerning to me. It, it, it went to later in the uh, interview. And if people watch interviews, debates with what we do, we tend to give the guests as much as much leeway as possible and then try to frame it in if they, they talk for a long time. And the left likes to talk because they believe everything is nuanced. And then they think that the right believes everything is black and white. No, some things are nuanced. Some things are black and white. For example, the pay uh, pay the wage gap statistic. Um, yeah. That's not nuanced. It's it's not correct. And I I had read her book and I looked at her sources, which basically it goes to the National Women's Law Center, it goes to the AAUW, and even tracking down those sources, which yeah. are women's activist sources, it said once you account for everything, for all choices, uh, women make about ninety four or ninety six cents in the dollar. And in Europe now, that's the most recent study shows that's not the case. So it was really disconcerting to me. And this is what I want. I wonder if this is a big part of why you do what you do. As someone who had to read this in college, it was uh, mandatory reading for my wife. I thought we were going to get to the pay gap. She was going to say 77 cents. I would have a counter. She would have a counter. And I thought the checkmate's going to be the AAUW study. It never even got off the tree trunk into the branch. No. The, the, no. I, the, and this is, this is the person who people are often citing when they're talking about the wage gap. Um, the, yeah. No, it's, it's essentially, and even the AAUW uh, UW study um, didn't, there, not all factors can be sufficiently quantified. Right. Right. So, I mean, if, if you are so your attitude, your attitude as an employee can't be sufficiently quantified in order to because if you have a great attitude as an employee, you know, you're showing up for the same 40 hours a week as the guy with the piss poor attitude. Right. You're eager to learn. You're eager to, you know, um, you're going to get promoted faster than that guy is going to. You right. know, if you have a personable attitude, if you're cooperative. If you're much more likely to be sent to HR if you, you know, make fun of someone's uh, highlights. 
I, mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't work for any any. Place I can only that, imagine you with HR. They wouldn't even have a, a check box for it. Uh, what do I do here? She grabbed a guy's dong and called him a pussy. What happened? No, no, no I would never do that. But they would they would literally be asking themselves, okay, so what box should I uncheck here? Is there any <laughs> box to uncheck? Um, as as far as but. At the same time, my bosses loved me, and it was because I kept things light and funny and sure and all of that. Right, yeah. but um, with uh, with those kinds of things, those unquantifiable things, those are not factored in either, right? So you're looking at these studies that anything that they can possibly quantify, anything that they can possibly assign a value to, um, they include them, and and it comes the the wage gap ends up to be between four and seven cents on the dollar. Right. And there's right. a middle step there, too, a study, a study that they try to cite, and this is the Women's Law Center. It's a, something Women Law Something Center. I could be getting it wrong. And it was like 80-something cents. And that says, well, it takes into account choices. But if you actually look at that, and that's why I didn't use that study, I anticipated she would, but she never did. Yeah. It says, you know, men and women who enter the medical field. Well, hold on a second. Yeah. That's a, that's a gamut. Is, you got, even, if you're, even if you're comparing doctors, you got, you've got you got... There are doctors and then there are doctors, right? right. Um, it depends on the number of hours you're willing to work every week. Um, it all it depends on the number of patients you're willing to see and how fast you're willing to, uh, you know, speed them through. Um, and it also depends on whether you're a pediatrician or a thoracic surgeon. Right. Right. You know, yeah. and men are much more likely to specialize. And my sister is a doctor, and she did not specialize. And the reason she had she had these tiny, tiny hands, and she used to do stitchery for uh, as a hobby, and she actually still does. Uh, she makes jewelry and stuff like that as a hobby. Um, so she's very, very dexterous, and she had uh, her her professors were begging her to go into plastic surgery, mm. right? Because because she was she would have excelled at that, and she said, okay, so. I go and I live the next four years of my life doing nothing but surgery and I'm specializing and I am like round the clock surgery, surgery, surgery. And one year before, one year after I am able to actually start practicing as a plastic surgeon, my biological clock starts going off and your you know, biological clock. <laughs> Not right. to mention the innocent lives of two children that hang in the balance. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, but she she was <laughs> like, is this really the trajectory that I want for myself to just get to the point where I'm able to practice and then I'm starting to take time off to have children, right? Is is that really what I want to do? Um, is, and, is that how I want things to, to unfold? So she did not specialize. She ended up getting an excellent, excellent career in another branch of medicine. And I think this is why the left hates the Socratic method. And that's what I try. That really, I think if you're making an argument from truth better than a, oh, swat down, you an idiot, is just ask the question. She's like, well, I see a lot more tellers than uh, managers. I said, why? And I asked several times, why? And there was no answer. And when there was no answer, that's where it came to, how many women do you employ, Stephen? Which is just a re... I was like, oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh checkmate. Um, but um, why? Oh, no. Why then, is that the then case? She says, then she said, then she said, oh, well, so you've got you've got yourself and not gay Jared and your other dude there at the at the panel, right? At the yeah. instrument panel. Sound guy, Edward, yeah. And, and then you've got... Uh, you've got your your female writer and a couple other women there, and I can guarantee you, right, that this group that contains the headline act, right, and the dude who's willing to spoon him half naked for a Dormio commercial. Yes. Okay. It's true. Okay. I did those things. Those two guys. Call it hazard pay. Other guy, <laughs> plus this other guy, right? You're gonna be on average paid more than those women. And she was wrong. Yeah, she was wrong. Well, Courtney's, pay, Courtney's paid really well. Here's the thing, too. What's crazy, I realized afterward is technically Courtney's in tech because Courtney writes on the website. So, Lotta with Crowder, <laughs> she's the full editor of the website. There's Courtney, Casey, Nicole. So, on the website, she manages the web page. Yeah, she manages the whole web page. There's Courtney, Casey, Nicole, and then two guys who are part time. So, there's three women and two guys. Now, that's a good example, right? We did all of this was blind hiring. Yeah. In the t on the TV show here, or the, the, the sort of video cast, um, no women applied. 
to be, to no. do any kind of sketches. And I, you know, I I write everything with Jared's assistant. Sometimes Owen comes in, but that's it. We're the only ones who write this so, show. So Jared has to play the female in all the sketches when you're not. It's doing not a it. tranny thing. That's the thing. I'm like, it's just going back to some like it hot. We don't have women. Women typically. <laughs> here's the truth. The reason most women aren't funny is they're afraid to look stupid. They're afraid mm -hmm. to look silly, and so it's really hard to get a woman to do a sketch where they feel as though, well, I don't want to be the hooker. You aren't actually a hooker. You know, it's yeah, just a no. big part of a female. Th these are choices. I don't, I don't want to spoon Steven Crowder. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I, you should imagine. Mattress, how do you feel about Antifa? The mattress is beautiful, but the, the spooning is a little awkward. I, well, yeah, but then you should see what Jared does with the, with the, the false fern, and uh, it, we call it equal. We call it equal. Let me ask you this. I play the bloopers late at night. Yeah, play <laughs> under the umbrella tree splat. Uh, I do think that um, <laughs> here's what I want to know, because people can watch more than they could learn in a lifetime from you, and I highly recommend it. Girl Writes What? Honey Badger Radio is a podcast. Um, is there something more? This is my question. I got to Fox News and I sat down there with, with people like Bill Kristol and Geraldo Rivera and Lonnie Davis and all these, all these Republican strategists. And, and I realized they don't know much. Uh, and then uh, this is what happened. This is someone who is almost mandatory reading in college feminist classes. Maybe not now because she's pissed off the tranny community. Um, is there a different level that I'm missing? Because it, it, to me, it's really scary that she didn't have any justification for the wage gap because that's what Patricia Arquette and M Meryl Streep, they're relying on her to be correct. Is there someone more who we should have on the show who could really explain the point of view? I almost felt like I didn't get an accurate play. Okay, one, one of the things that I will tell you about um, Naomi Wolf is that her math isn't very good. And so essentially uh, in one of the or in the first edition and possibly further on i don't know i don't even know whether it's been corrected yet um she claimed that uh deaths from anorexia in the united states anorexia nervosa were in the hundreds of thousands and there are something like a hundred deaths a year right. attributed to anorexia nervosa so and that was a that was a mathematical calculation error mm -hmm. on her part yeah um so you know, you're you're looking at somebody who is not ascent, not especially really good with um, assessing the evidence and and uh, subjecting it to em empiricism and to uh, statistical analysis. But um, this is who so, the feminists trot out. This is yes, this is like they're like, hey, course. you know, you're well, here's they, our they, champ. They did until she defended um, what's his name, uh, the WikiLeaks guy. And, uh, 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 not, uh, Assange or Stone, Snowden? Yeah, Ju Julian Assange. I get them both confused all the time too. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm just, I'm getting old, and the names just don't come to my head anymore. No, just blame that glass of white wine. Continue. Um, yeah, it's my first, so it's, it can't possibly be. You have a terrible um, problem. Go ahead. I do. Like it. <laughs> All right, we my, don't have a ton. I know you could talk for hours, but we. My I, drinking I, problem is my drinking problem is that I don't have enough to drink. This is true. But, um, but no, it's so. I mean, like they are trotting her out. She's very charismatic, and she really did charm that audience at that panel discussion. She really kind of had them eating out of the palm of her hand, and she was playing every emotional trick in the book, right? In terms of her body language, in terms of uh, just her linguistics, everything else, right? And just she, she, the very first thing she did was talk about how honored she was to have been invited to 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 speak at an event that was full of such brilliant, smart people. Like, to be a libertarian, you have to be like a total brainiac, right? You have to be a member of Mensa. And so, essentially, she's she's pandering to them and she's flattering them and she's uh, you know warming them up and she's got her tongue. You know, okay, no. careful. We have to get the, we have to go yeah. relatively quickly anyway. So yeah. let's get to the where are you going but, with this? But <laughs> essentially, essentially, she was she was actually pulling a huge number of emotional and uh, emotionally mani manipulative uh, tricks. Oh yeah. In in that panel discussion to get certain people, the audience, the moderator, and the other panelists over on her side, right? And so. 
you know, and the panelists bought it. I was sitting there going, I felt like Ferris Bueller. She bought it. I couldn't believe it. She's like, on our show, she's like, well, I'm more libertarian. And then it's talking about, uh, you know, government funded daycare for both yeah. men and women. Yeah. And I'm going, well, hold on a second. I have an idea as to why that could be a bad idea. So well, what would it be? I said, the businesses who hired them might not be huge fans of it. And she just didn't have, well, I disagree. That's where I get off the libertarian train. Well, hold on a second. That's where you get off? Like, I understand yeah. some people are like, no military, borderline anarchy. Like, you get off on two days off for both mom and dad, despite them being hired by a private business? Got news for you. You're a socialist. All right, um, Karen, I do, because I want people to actually learn more about this. Not only what we discussed with Naomi Wolf. I, final question, and this has to be a, a, a kind of a quick answer because we asked this to the audience. Do you feel as though you benefit from... Uh, we're at a point now with the internet. I think you're seeing a lot. Uh, this is the young, the most conservative young generation ever. Do you think you benefit from you getting on stage with Naomi Wolf from, uh, we just saw Ted Cruz, Bernie Sanders, Ben Shapiro, Cenk. Do you think it's kind of the first time where people just actually get to look at, okay, the right, the left, whatever you want to call it, the exchange of ideas and say, hey, that's rational. Do you feel as though that's a big reason for your popularity now? Well, I think I think essentially because I because I am good at uh, at remaining level headed. Um, when someone like Chenk blows a stack at me and demands that I make him a ham sandwich, he ends up looking bad. He ends up looking bad even to people who agree with him. Um, someone like Naomi Wolf, when she when she just goes completely off the deep end and and loses her mind because I say that you know because I said that rape is a crime based on consent, um, you know, like she's essentially showing herself as somebody who cannot be trusted to speak rationally on, on the topic. And I think that the more that we have of people who are actually bringing relevant counter arguments, yes, but what about, you know, like, okay, I, I get it. That's what you think. But what about this? Right. Um, and the more those people who were challenging, um, who we are challenging, uh, lose their minds, yeah, right. The the better things are for rationality. Well, in, that was the general. the question of the day. I think people are waking up that Bernie Sanders is, regardless of views, is not a nice guy. He's no. an angry, hateful, covetous old sinner. To quote uh, Mr. Dickens. Thank you so much, Karen Strawn. Best place for people to find you is. Girl, YouTube uh, user slash girl writes what? And I know exactly what that girl writes. Mm, it's naughty. Bad, naughty. bad thing. Involves a potted plant. Dirty. Wrapping this up after this. Oh, yes. And now for Barely Legal with Bill Richmond, sponsored by Mug Club. Hi, I'm half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond here for Louder with Crowder to answer some commonly confused terms in the legal world. We have some questions today. Bill, what's the difference between guilty and liable? Well, let me explain. When you're guilty, that means you have been found guilty and convicted of a crime in a criminal court. So, for example, O.J. Simpson, while acquitted of the crime of murder, was convicted of being a douchebag sack of shit and a kidnapper 13 years later. By comparison, one is civilly liable in a civil lawsuit for money damages. There we go for another example. O.J. Simpson found civilly liable for the murder and wrongful death of two innocent human beings. And we'll add an asterisk because he's a black man. On behalf of Louder with Crowder, cheers. This has been Barely Legal with Bill Richmond, sponsored by Mug Club. Dance with a little Greg Luganis. 
hitting the backboard action right there, spreading HIV throughout the pool. Good work. For those of you who are millennials, look it up. <laughs> People don't remember that. Greg Luganis, HIV, yep. did a, I will say, amazing diver, but did that where you jump forward, flip back. Someone out there who's a diver, explain that what that is to me, what that's called. Usually, you know, you would backflip or front flip if you're at the yeah. public pool. Flip you You yeah. jump, but you flip backward, head towards the, the diving board, hit his head on the platform. Boom. Blood all in the pool. Didn't know it was HIV positive. They did a TV movie for him. Really? Greg Luganis. And I remember it was like, uh, maybe they didn't make it. I remember it was in the making, and it, he was played by Mario Lopez, oh. which I felt, I thought, even for, like, on his AIDS bed, that must be rough. Like, <laughs> Who's going to play me? Is it Tom, uh, hey, Tom Hanks? No. Uh, will it be Daniel Day-Lewis? No. Russell Crowe, if he's not singing? A.C. Slater from Saved by the Bell. You couldn't even get, like, Louis Diamond Phillips or something? <laughs> so that was Greg Luganis. Uh, and, uh, Razor Fist, thank you. Girl Rights What, Karen Strong, Iraq Veteran 88. Thank you so much to everyone who made this show possible. And gosh, you know, going back to that 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 Bernie Ted debate, I realize uh, what it is that, that got me so upset about it is, um, okay, people say, what do you talk? Anyone who speaks in platitudes of conservatism, liberalism, again, shut up. This isn't the program for you. This was a perfect example of liberalism, progressivism, socialism versus free enterpriseism, capitalism, conservatism. It's not just it's not just two different uh, ideas and, and policy ide ideas. It's two completely different brains perceiving the world com two completely different it ways. It is two entirely different views on both the nature of good and evil yes. and human nature. And the human condition, pseudo leftist intellectuals like to say, well, we're going to study the human condition. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> and the only thing that has ever tapped into the natural state of the human condition condition is free enterprise, is capitalism. Let me kind of give you an example. So conservatism is taking human nature, okay? The gamut, taking all of the facets, taking both empathy and selfishness and harnessing it into a system that benefits all people involved. You have to be empathetic to come up with a good product or service that would benefit somebody else and somewhat selfish to want to benefit from it. Whereas liberalism, leftism is greed. It's simply dying by greed. It is liberalism when you look with Bernie Sanders. Like I said, he's a bully. Well, most, most of the people agree with me. That's what he says. That's it. Look, most of, the, most of us think you're a loser. And that's supposed to be empathetic. That's not, that's not an argument. Simply saying that 60% of people want to steal from somebody want else. Want something. And, and, and the crazy thing is about liberalism, it's seen as compassion. It really is... Uh, um, it's accidental nihilism. People are there is using this term. No, no, nihilism means someone who doesn't really believe in anything is, tends to be very mm -hmm. pessimistic. Basically, everything is meaningless. People have accused Nolan's films of being very nihilistic, that. Kubrick of being nihilistic. But liberalism, particularly like that young girl, um, I don't believe that they, many of them don't believe in anything. They don't believe in anything. They're very pessimistic. Think about this for a second. It's, I can't, well, I can't make $15 an hour unless Bernie Sanders says so. Well, you know, I can't, I can't pay for my health care unless someone there signs a bill. You know, I can't, I can't take care of myself unless, unless we adopt the Danish system. Whereas conservatism has to be hopeful. Mm. It has to believe that you can do it. Like that truck driver, that guy who owns a truck driving company. Listen, that guy has probably, you, you think, this is another irony. The, the, the left thinks they're the only ones who've had tough breaks. You don't think that guy's had some tough breaks? Why, because he's white? Okay, listen, fat truck drivers with goatees, they have an uphill battle, all right? There aren't a lot of quotas for that guy. You're not gonna be studying him in college. He's not gonna be considered a marginalized class, which ironically kind of makes him a marginalized class. Fat Midwestern truck drivers with goatees, you know if they've made it, that they've earned their spot, okay? That guy had to go, you think that, you think that guy doesn't come from a working class family? You think that guy's not middle class? You don't think that at, that, at some point in that guy's life he could have said, man, it would, sure would be a lot better if someone provided me with healthcare, living wage, insert whatever your desire is here. Instead, he was hopeful and believed in himself enough to go out and start a business and employ other people, likely forego salaries to make payroll in the, in the hopes of making it big. It can only exist. Optimism, believing in the best portion of the human condition, can only exist in conservatism. Let me give you kind of what, to, to be re reductive. Remember Naomi Wolf said that? I think that's a bit reductive. Reductive. When I said, well, okay, you said, Naomi, that Jesus was the first feminist, and then you agreed that Muhammad was a serial wife-beating pedophile slash rapist. Let's be reductive. What's wrong with being reductive? Okay. Um, 
let's say you put people in the woods with limited technology. I don't know, take your couple of axes and knives, okay? And you have liberals and conservatives. The mindset, the spirit, this is what we're talking about. Like you said, they see the world in a fundamentally different way. Mm. The conservatism, the conservative, the, the right-leaning person, use your terminology, insert it here. The individualist, okay, says, all right, we're all here, we're stuck, we're stranded. He's gonna be the guy chopping down trees, hunting, setting up traps, foraging, creating shelter, and likely, yeah, at some point, creating shelters that other people could rent or buy out from him because he knows you're stuck there and he's trying to be industrious. The leftist on that island either A, dies from greed, I want, but you're not doing, or B, gets enough other greedy leftists to come together and demand that the guy who went out and chopped down the trees and created the houses gives it to them. That is what you are seeing. It is, when people say it's a fiscal issue, theft isn't a moral issue. What Bernie Sanders was advocating was fundamentally immoral. And that is what comes back to the show. It's not just about politics. It's about the way you live your life, son. It is about the way you see yourself. Do you see yourself as someone who is capable? Do you see yourself as someone who needs someone else to help you? And the truth is too, it's, it's all the magic tricks from Bernie Sanders, right? The bullying, the, 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 the handouts. He loses all of his leverage the second he runs into someone in the middle class who doesn't want a handout. When he talks to that truck driver, that truck driver can be one of two people. Hey, I've had it rough, give me stuff, or hey, I've had it rough, I believe I can do better. If it's someone who believes in themselves, Bernie Sanders, oh, 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 go, go, brothers! And a great example of this, actually, we're just talking about it, your, your, your little brother. Yeah, I'm really proud of him. He's made so much progress. He, he, he was, uh, he, he would tell you, a little overweight growing up. It's a fat little kid. A fat little kid. And he said, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm going to grow up. I'm going to take this by the, by, you know, this bull by the horns. And he is, he has made so much progress by working hard day in and out. He's running up. Now he's runs, a, I think, a 5K almost every single day. He's charting calories. He's, he's making, he's charting progress over time. And then, you know, we yeah, have funny moments too. That's right. We, well, it came to this because we were laughing our ass off. We were laughing our ass off. But he told you the story. He told me the story. And I, I'm so proud of him. Andrew, I'm so proud of you. But he's telling me and my dad the story over FaceTime. He's like, yeah, it's a rough day. I was running my 5K like I do every day, losing all my weight and stuff. I get out there just by himself, no friends helping him out, no, no, no partners, no, you know, cheer on, just by himself, doing it, getting done. And he says, I had a rough day. I got out for my run, and I tripped and fell twice. <laughs> Flat on my face, and I just yelled the F word. <laughs> and, I'm th- and I'm sitting here thinking, like, I'm Andrew, I'm... I'm so glad you're okay, but you don't know what I would do for the footage of seeing a little chubby kid trying his best, falling well, he's not and a little screaming. chubby kid anymore. Not anymore, not anymore. But in your head, he is. In my, in my head, brother. he's my little brother. And so I'm just thinking, what I would do for the footage, and, and we all laughed. I'm like, you would, you would, don't do it. Don't funnier, don't you would watch it oh, over again. Absolutely, like, oh, yeah, absolutely. I'd the watch only, it on a loop. The only thing funnier would be if he had a, like a cake in his hand <laughs> and <laughs> fell into it. Like, oh! Oh, brother, <laughs> Disney, you know, and Beethoven comes and licks it off. Whoop, 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 whoop. No, that is, and it is funny because I will say, um, you know what, here, like we said, fat little kid. He was, he looks great. He's a really smart kid. We were actually, I've been, I've been so really smart. rooting for him, praying for the kid because he's one of those guys, he's so bright. Now he's a straight A student. He wants to get into, uh, uh, so I, like all he wants so to go to Annapolis. I couldn't have gotten into. Uh, no, brilliant kid, but he was a real smart ass and he was troubled at one point oh, because yeah. he was bored and we said, we really hope he ends up playing for the good guys. And I am proud of him too. I, but again, I, I used to be a little bit, a little bit nervous uh, offering compliments when someone loses weight. Like, oh, well, what is that? Are they saying, what are you saying I was fat before? And I just go, yeah, yeah. Andrew, we're proud of you. He was a ch- you were a chubby little kid the first time I met you, and you look really good now. And isn't that, and you know why? Because he said, all right, that's not me. This is who I'm going to be. And that's what discipline is. It's not, it's doing something when it's no longer fun. Mm. After, after the honeymoon phase is worn off and nobody is looking. And that is, whether you see it or not, and that is why someone like Andrew, he's very likely. Wait, wait, 15 years old. 15 years old. 15 years old, he is someone who is very likely to be successful. He's someone who is much more likely to run a business, probably have a higher income. This is someone, you can't change that. 
in his nature. He's someone who improved it himself. Now he decided, and I hope that this show helps with, we, we have a lot of young men out there. I hope this helps you out there to do it. I was a fat little kid. I remember I got, to, I, I was fat because I stopped growing and was really short. And I got a, a gym membership to Energy Cardio at 13 years old. I did my parents sign off on it. They thought I was joking because I wanted it for Christmas. I didn't know what I was doing when I started, but I started doing something. And Andrew's a great story of it. He sat down, he said, this is not me. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take control of my life. Now the leftist, mm. that person on the island who doesn't build the shelter, that person on the island who wants from someone else, that leftist, Andrew was a leftist, would say, well, you know what? You know who I, I look in the mirror, I see a fat kid. I'm a fat guy. I'm a C yeah. student because I'm bored. That's who I am, and I need somebody else to fix that about me. How you see yourself defines how you see the world. That's and how, I will when never I was... shy away from the idealism of separating mm -hmm. and polarizing the left from the right. That's why I'm conservative, because I want to see, I, I, we get hundreds of emails. I want thousands of emails from kids like Andrew. Mm -hmm. And you know what? He's the kind of kid who watches someone like Bernie Sanders saying, well, 65% of us, and he goes, you know what? Bullshit, because 65% of you looked in the mirror and saw yourself as the fat kid. And I'm the other half. Hmm. I'm the other portion that said, I can change it about myself. So Andrew, listen, we're really proud of you. I know your brother has something he wants to say. We'll talk about it next week because we do have to get going. We have uh, a plane to catch. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Uh, lots of good guests.